welcome back to another episode of the Scram Line. We're kicking off Halloween this year with my Smoky Bubbling Cauldron Halloween Cake. This cake looks absolutely awesome and it's delicious and it's got this really cool smoky bubbling effect. I'm going to show you guys how to achieve that later on in the video but before we get stuck into today's video a lot of people watching this video right now are not actually subscribed young old whoever you are watching this video hi first of all hit the subscribe button it's completely free next to the subscribe button there's a little bell icon hit that and youtube sends you a notification on your phone or via email telling you that there's a new video on this channel so you don't miss out on all the fun stuff. Let's get stuck into today's video. Now, the cake that I'm gonna show you guys in this recipe, you need to triple it. So you'll need to make it three times to actually achieve this cake. It's quite a big cake. So you wanna begin by adding your flour, sugar, baking powder and salt into a large mixing bowl. You wanna mix that until everything is well combined. Then you wanna add your butter and you wanna mix that until you reach a crumbly sand-like texture. Next, we're gonna add our eggs, milk, oil, vanilla extract, yogurt, lime flavoring, some teal food gel and some yellow food gel. And you wanna mix that until everything is well combined. Now guys, if you can't find uh, lime flavoring, uh, just use lime zest or lime juice. It will infuse the cake with that lime flavor. Once you've got that mix, you're going to split it into different kinds of cake tins. So today we're gonna to be using a eight inch round cake tin and we're gonna be using an eight inch half sphere cake tin. So you can grab these at your local cake supply store or you can grab them online on Amazon or wherever you can buy cake stuff. You wanna line the bottom of those tins with some baking paper and spray it with some oil spray. We're gonna pour the batter into each cake tin, filling up about three quarters of the way, and then we're gonna bake these for about 50 up to 70 minutes, depending on how your oven temperature is. These are quite big cakes, so they will take a little bit longer to bake. Now that our cakes have baked, we're gonna let them cool down completely and we're gonna trim the tops off. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Then we're gonna take them out of the tins and with the half sphere cake, we are going to trim that cake in half and then we're going to trim a little bit of the top off. So I'm using a cake leveler to do that. Now, the reason why we wanna trim a little bit of the top off is because when we turn it upside down and it forms the bottom of our cake, we want somewhere flat for our cake to sit on so it doesn't wobble around on our cake board. Now with the eight inch cake, we're gonna cut that one in half and now we're ready to put this thing together. But before we do that, we need our buttercream frosting. So I've got some of my chocolate buttercream frosting here. I'm gonna add some black food gel in there. If you don't wanna use the black food gel, you can use black cocoa powder when you're making the chocolate frosting. If you wanna grab the recipe for that, it's up there pop it into a piping bag and snip off the end. We're gonna add a little dab of frosting on top of our eight inch cake board and we're gonna pop the top of our half sphere cake on top of that cake board, help it stick to the cake board with the frosting, just kind of press it down firmly and then we are going to pipe a ring of frosting around the top of our cake and then fill it in with some more frosting. Use a small offset spatula to smoothen that out before you add the other half of your half sphere cake on top, so the larger piece. We're gonna repeat that with the frosting on top of that cake and around the side, so we're gonna crumb coat this cake. Uh, then you want to use a small offset spatula to go around the cake and smoothen it out. It doesn't need to be perfect yet. Just make sure you get that nice, smooth, uh, round half sphere shape going. So with the other cake, we're gonna add a little dab of frosting on top of another eight inch cake board. Now I'd recommend using a thinner cake board for this one. And then you wanna add your first layer of cake on top, fill that with some frosting and add your second layer of cake on top. Now we're gonna pop this in the fridge and let it chill overnight because we want it to be nice and chill when we cut it. We want the top of our cauldron to be a little bit curved, not perfectly straight. And we, it's much easier to do that when it's actually chilled. So we're gonna be using a serrated knife or a sharp knife is fine. And you're gonna cut curves into the top of that cake. 
Start off slowly guys and don't cut too much. Just kind of keep cutting until you're happy with your shape. Once you've got it looking right, you are going to use a cookie cutter, so a round cookie cutter, to cut some cake in the middle of that cake and you're gonna use a spoon to shovel it out. So you're gonna scoop that cake out. Now the reason why we're making a hole in the top of this cake is because this is where our dry ice is gonna sit so we can get that nice smoky, bubbling cauldron effect. Once you've hollowed out that hole, you're gonna add some frosting around the sides of the cake and in the hole and smoothen it out as best you can. You're gonna pop that in the fridge and we're gonna move on to preparing our other half sphere cake. Now, our half sphere cake has been chilling and we're gonna add a support system in here because this cake is quite heavy and you don't want it collapsing in on itself. So we wanna add some bubble straws into that half sphere cake. Our other cake has chilled now, so we're gonna carefully transfer it on top of our half sphere cake and we're going to seal it with some more buttercream frosting. Use a small offset spatula just to smoothen that out. It's gonna go back in the fridge for a final time before we add a final layer of frosting. Now guys, we're gonna move on to making the fondant decorations for this cake. The first thing we're gonna start with is the tentacles because we wanna let them dry. And there's actually a couple different elements to this cake that you wanna make the day before you actually put them on the cake so they've got time to dry. So it's as easy as using some purple fondant and we're gonna roll it out. Now the little tentacles are made out of blue fondant and we're just gonna roll those out and use a little ball fondant tool. So you can get these at cake decorating stores as well. You're gonna pop those on the tentacles and you just use a little bit of water to help them stick. And then you're gonna get these nice and squiggly. So pop them on top of a baking tray lined with baking paper so they don't stick. And once they've dried, you're gonna pop a skewer or a cake pop stick in the bottom very, very carefully so you don't crack your fondant. So let them dry as much as you can. You can even make these a, a week ahead so that they're really, really dry. Let's move on to making the fondant eyeballs. These things are so cool and they're really easy to make. So we're gonna roll some white fondant and we're gonna stick some blue fondant stick discs on top. Now the reason I've actually added a plastic wrap on top of my fondant is because when you do that and you use a cookie cutter or I'm actually using a, um, the end of a piping tip to cut these out, it gets a nice smoother effect rather than like a straighter edge, if that makes sense. You don't have to do it, it's completely optional, but I thought it would look better. So once you've got some blue discs and some black fondant discs and then some little tiny white fondant discs, you're ready to put this thing together and it's really, really easy. We're gonna finish these off by adding some red lines around the outside of the eyeball using a food safe marker. And then a black food safe marker for the actual iris. So once these are done, again, let them set aside to dry. The other decorations we wanna make, which are really, really easy to make, are the handles. So we're gonna be using black fondant for that. And then the rim on top of our cauldron cake is gonna be made out of black fondant rolled out as well. One of my favorite things about this cake is the blue, greenish, yellow flames at the bottom of it. So that's made by mixing all these different fondant colors together, which is really cool and it gets you this marble effect. So I'd recommend that you do the flames the day that you're putting them on the cake. That's probably the only thing I would make fresh. The last fondant decoration you're gonna make are these little green bubbles, so just green fondant. We're ready to put this thing together, so we're gonna add a little dab of black frosting on either side of our cauldron, and that's gonna help us stick the handles on top of the cake. Now 
The next thing we're gonna add is the flame. So again, you wanna make those fresh and we're gonna stick them on the bottom, around the bottom of the cake. Then you can add the tentacles. Now, again, they're gonna have skewers in the bottom of them. So when you're serving the cake, make sure the person serving knows their skewers in the cake. They're not gonna kill anyone, but you don't want people having splinters while they're eating cake. Add your eyeballs and add the green bubbles. And guys, the very last thing you wanna do is add the dry ice into a shot glass and pop it into the center. You're gonna pour some water on it and it's gonna bubble and it's gonna look awesome and everyone's gonna love you. And all the kids are gonna want a cake of their own. This thing is so cool. I love how cool it looks, but I also love that it's kind of interactive and fun as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that people who used to watch this channel a little while ago were expecting Nikki Starter to make an appearance. Um, she's not making an appearance today. She might make an appearance this year. I don't know, we'll see. Do you guys want Nikki Star Tip in a video? I'm in talks with her manager. Anyway, so if you enjoyed this video and you'd have no idea who Nikki Star Tip is, um, click the like button and make sure you subscribe, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait for you guys to see what else I have for Halloween this year. I'm so excited for you guys to see them. One of the cakes is down there. I'm finishing it today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scrum Light.